Hi guys, welcome to Revolutionary Motion. I'm Kata. And I'm Clemens. And today we're going to show you guys the difference between open and closed stands and tell you when to use which. Please subscribe to our channel and help us spread our coaching advice to more people. All right, so first of all, I'll explain to you guys what open and closed stands actually are. Now, you've probably heard a lot of people talking about the foot positioning in correlation to the stance. It's actually not so much about the foot positioning, it's more about where your hips are pointing or your chest was pointing if you were standing completely straight. So now, for the closed stance, let's start with that. If you're positioning your feet like this or this, doesn't really matter because you can point your hips towards the side fence to keep your position and your stance closed. Now the idea is, some people consider this a closed stance, some people consider this a closed stance, the hips are pointing in the same direction, it's basically the same thing. If your hips are pointing more in like a 45 degree angle off of the line straight forward, that would be more a semi-open stance. And if your uh, hips are pointing more forward, almost straight towards the net, you're in an open stance. So now that we understand what open and closed stands are, let's cut right to the question. Which one is better? And the answer is, unfortunately, it depends. Why does it depend? It depends because there's different scenarios in which one or the other option is a more efficient way to hit the ball. Let me go into this. So if you are, for example, trying to hit with a closed stance, okay, no matter now if your feet are positioned like this, like this, or like this, because as we just explained, the hips are the driving factor in telling you if you're with a closed or open stance. If you are with a closed stance, and now you're trying to hit the ball, if you rotate your upper body until the perfect contact point, we'll link a video up here to show you guys where the perfect contact point is, you will notice that the racket is in a position where the ball would go straight down the line. That means that the most efficient shot you could hit with a closed stance in your hips would be a down the line shot. If you're now trying to go cross court with your shot, your racket would have to be further in front and if you get the racket in the right position for the cross court shot, you will feel a lot more discomfort than you did when you kept it for the down the line shot in your closed stance position. So that tells you that the closed stance in general is a better positioning to hit the ball down the line. If we're now going towards the open stance position where your hips are pointing more forward, and again, it doesn't matter if your feet are here, here, it matters where the hips is pointing, and you're now trying to find your optimal contact point, that would be roughly around here. Now this ball, as you can see, is going cross court. If I now put my racket into the position to hit the ball down the line, I'm before the perfect contact point. That means that I would hit the shot with not the most efficient power output. I would hit it a little bit softer than if I go cross court. So now you might think that you should have two different stances considering where you want to hit the ball. Open stance for the cross court, close stance for the down the line shot. Well, that would technically give you the best shot possible. The problem is your opponent can see that. They can pick up on your different uh, stances considering where you want to hit the ball and they can now start running to the ball before you even hit it. So that's a huge issue. That's why at a higher level, a lot of players actually choose a stance right between those two, which is a semi-open stance. Because from there, they have pretty much the same ability to go cross court and down the line at maybe 90, 95% of their Efficient, most efficient power output. Now that's not perfect, but it's pretty close to it on both sides and it doesn't give your opponent the opportunity to see where you're going before you actually hit the ball. So you're kind of disguising your forehand or backhand shot to make sure that your opponent has to react to your shot rather than anticipate it very early. Now obviously in tennis many times you have to improvise to different kinds of balls that get thrown at you. That means that you won't always be able to set up in the optimal position, in the optimal stance for yourself. So you have to adjust a little bit. So for example, let's take a ball that pushes you very far off the court. If you ran to that ball and you felt really comfortable hitting with a closed stance, well guess what, if you're on the stretch over here, you won't be able to play the cross court shot from there because you can't rotate into the ball in the full sprint. So that means your opponent already knows you're gonna hit it down the line shot. So you need to make sure that that last step in those moments happens with your right foot so you're a little bit more open in your stance and you're not giving away where your ball is gonna go. Same thing goes for a short ball, like an approach shot. If you're running up to that ball, many times you won't have enough time 
to get yourself set up from the side so you can hit in a perfect open stance. So you'll end up playing more of a semi-close to close stance on these approach shots because it's easier to position yourself like this or like this to then approach the shot and follow through forward without losing your balance. Thank you guys for watching. Please click the like button if you like the video and we'll see you guys soon.